Welcome to today's episode of the Canine Show and today I'm breaking down my updated top 10 breeds for first time owners. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for daily uploads but without further ado, let's start off our list with number 10. And at number 10, we have the Boston Terrier. The Boston Terrier is often referred to as the American Gentleman for good reason. These smart little dogs boast an interesting ancestry owing some of it to the English Bulldog. The breed first appeared on the scene in the States back in 1893 when various terrier and bull type dogs were crossed. The result saw the first pair of dogs being born and it was these dogs that were to form the foundation stock for the Boston Terrier breed that we know and love today. Boston Terriers have found their way into the hearts and homes of many owners around the world thanks to their smart looks and their dapper eye-catching appeal. These charming little dogs boast a personality that perfectly matches their good looks and they are always even tempered which makes them a pleasure to have around with the added bonus being that Boston Terriers are highly adaptable too, being just as home living in an apartment in town as they are living in a house in the country. Boston Terriers are known for their intelligent and lively personalities. They can be a little strong-willed at times which can border on them being stubborn and why it's so important for these little dogs to be well socialised and correctly trained from a young age so they understand what is required of them. Early training also helps to establish their place in the pack and who the alpha dog in a household is, reducing the chance of a Boston exhibiting any dominant behaviours. Some interesting facts about the breed include that Bostons were originally bred to be fighting dogs. The Boston Terrier is the official state dog of Massachusetts. And a Boston Terrier called Sergeant Stubby was made a hero in the First World War and was the official mascot of the 102nd Infantry Regiment. The Boston Terrier was the first non-sporting dog to be bred in the United States. And all too often, a Boston Terrier is confused for a French Bulldog. A lot of Boston Terriers love everyone they meet and they don't really see anybody as a stranger. However, like all breeds, there are some positive and negatives, and the positives include that they're extremely people-oriented, loving and affectionate. They're low-maintenance when it comes to grooming, and they're very intelligent and always eager to please, making them easy to train. Bostons are good watchdogs, although not necessarily good guard dogs, and they shed minimally. Bostons are also a great choice for first-time owners. However, the negatives can include that Boston Terriers are high-energy dogs that like to be kept busy. They're not the best choice of families with very young children, and they can suffer from separation anxiety if left alone for too long. They do have a tendency to be mouthy, and they're known to suffer from a few hereditary health issues, so vet bills can be higher than other breeds. And last but not least, Boston Terriers do extremely well when on a fed, a grain-free diet, but these diets are known to cost a little bit more money. At number 9, we have one of my personal favourite breeds in the world, the Bull Terrier. The Bull Terrier is a very distinctive and powerful looking dog that is a real softy at heart, loving nothing more than to be a part of a family. Although many of them boast having white coats, Bull Terriers come in a lot of other colours, which includes Brindle. There are no height or weight limits for them, but with this said, their size should always be in keeping with the breed and whether a dog is female or male. Renowned for their fun-loving and courageous natures, Bull Terriers also boast having a bit of a stubborn streak, which is why their training must start early and socialising a puppy is an absolute must for them to grow into well-balanced, happy, mature dogs. They are not the best choice for first-time dog owners because training a bully can be quite challenging thanks to their stubborn streak. Bull Terrier puppies are incredibly cute and it's all too easy to spoil them, which is a big mistake because bullies are smart and quickly learn how to dominate a situation if they are allowed and why consistency is essential when handling and training them, even when they're puppies. Over the years and through careful selective breeding, responsible Bull Terrier breeders have successfully developed a dog that makes a wonderful family pet and companion. English Bull Terriers might look ferocious thanks to them being so powerfully built, but in fact these dogs boast wonderfully kind and friendly natures with the added bonus of them having a really keen sense of humour. They are intelligent characters and need to be given the right amount of mental stimulation and daily exercise to be truly happy well-rounded dogs. And with this said, Bull Terriers are known to be a little headstrong and being such a powerful dog with a lot of terrier in them, they do need to be handled and trained correctly right from the word go. Some interesting facts about this breed include that the offspring of white coloured bull terriers are always white, but some dogs can have markings on their heads. Offspring of white and coloured parent dogs can either be coloured and or white in colour. General Patton had a bull terrier as a family pet and became a huge fan of the breed, and the last dog he owned was called Willie. And it finally, it is illegal to dock an English bull terrier's tail in the UK, which is a law that came into effect in England on the 6th of April 2007. Although certain breeds are exempted for working dogs and others may have their tails docked for medical reasons, in Scotland there is a total ban which came into effect in April of 2007. The positives of this breed include that bullies are incredibly loyal and devoted to their families. They're fun-loving and energetic by nature. 
They're the perfect choice for people who work from home and who lead active outdoor lives. And they're good with kids of all ages, being excellent watchdogs as well. They're also low maintenance on the grooming front and they're known to just be moderate shedders. Highly adaptable and just as happy living in town as they are in the country. And they're very sensitive to their owner's mood, which can be a real pleasure. However, the negatives can include that bullies do mature slowly and remain boisterous puppies for a long time. And puppies can be quite destructive around the home. They're incredibly people orientated and hate being on their own, which means that they suffer from separation anxiety quite seriously. They have been known to be stubborn when it suits them, and bullies are prone to suffer from certain health issues, so vet bills can be high. Dams often also have whelping problems, and they are expensive to buy and insure. Taking our number eight spot is the poodle. When you mention the word poodle, people conjure up an image of a pampered pet. In fact, the poodle, a dog of many sizes, being found in three, the toy poodle, miniature poodle and standard poodle, is often cited as being in the top five for intelligence in dog breeds, is an excellent multi-purpose dog, excelling at many different canine sports. The poodle as a breed has been around for many years and was bred as a water dog to retrieve game and fowl from rivers and lakes. The name poodle is thought to be a derivative of the old German extraction poodlen, which translate roughly as to splash in water. However, the exact origins are unclear. Whether its ancestry originally hailed from the East or Africa is debatable, but it is believed that they eventually found their way to Europe, notably Portugal, where one of its alleged cousins, the Portuguese water dog, hails from. Having very similar appearances, this is not impossible. The three sizes of poodle have existed for centuries, with the larger sizes working in the field and the smaller sizes often being kept as companions. The toy variety, sometimes known as the sleeve poodle, was sometimes kept in the sleeves of its owners and was often used as a hand warmer. Poodles have a very colourful history, being kept by nobility and royalty through to travelling people. They have been utilised in every possible role a dog could fill and to this day remain a popular companion. As a very intelligent dog, poodles can get bored quite easily if not enough mental stimulation and physical stimulation is provided. This needs to be in the form of exercise, play, learning and obedience. The poodle is very capable of learning new commands and has a talent for learning tricks. The reason why, along with its showy appearance, it is used on a regular basis in circuses. They are playful, patient and loyal to the family, but can be reserved with strangers until they get to know them. This makes them good watchdogs and they will readily bark to alert of anyone approaching the home. They are very companionable animals and like children and other animals. However, the usual early socialisation will not hurt at all. In our number 7 spot is the Greyhound. The Greyhound is an elegant, graceful dog that over time has found their way into the hearts and homes of many people both here in the UK and elsewhere in the world and for good reason. They are known to be wonderful companions and family pets that form strong ties with their owners, which makes them such a pleasure to have around. These athletic, lean dogs love to let off steam whenever they can, but they also know how to chill out and relax, which is just one of the reasons why they've been consistently remained such a popular breed. They are, in a nutshell, the most popular of all hound breeds, with the added bonus of greyhounds being low maintenance when it comes to keeping their coats looking good, and for such large dogs, they are not big eaters either. Greyhounds are affectionate and loyal dogs that boast a very gentle side to their nature. They are intelligent and in the right environment and hands they are easy to train. And once they form a bond with an owner and their family, greyhounds become valued members of the household and enjoy nothing more than being involved in all that goes on from day to day. They love to be out and about, but once a greyhound gets, ha greyhound gets home, they chill out and relax. The only downside to their devotion is these dogs also are prone to suffer from separation anxiety if they are left alone to their own devices, even for short periods of time. As such, they are a great choice of family pet in a household where one family member usually stays at home when everyone else is out. Some interesting facts about this breed is that the greyhounds are the only breed mentioned in the Bible, in Proverbs 30, 29-31. They are the fastest dog in the world, and the greyhound has a nickname which is the 40 mile an hour couch potato. In mythology, the goddess Diana often had a greyhound at her side in works of art, and the American President Hayes owned a greyhound in 1876 and kept his canine companion in the White House with him, and they are thought to be one of the most ancient hound breeds in the world. Some positives of this breed include that greyhounds are very loyal, loving and devoted dogs, and they have low-maintenance coats that are very good around children. They are easy to house train, and in the right hands they are easy to train in general, because they are so eager to please. However, the negatives can include that greyhounds need a lot of exercise to be truly happy. They have delicate skin and feel the cold, which means they must wear dog coats during the winter months. Greyhounds do have a very strong prey drive, so you need to be careful if they're off their lead around any kind of livestock or smaller animals. 
and some greyhounds can be a little nervous and aloof around strangers. They are known to be thieves and will help themselves to food if they can get to it. And like I mentioned, they suffer from separation anxiety if left on their own. At our number six spot is the Golden Retriever. Golden Retrievers consistently remain one of the most popular choices of pet here in the UK and the world over for many years. These dogs boast wonderfully calm natures, which paired to their intelligence and trainability make them the perfect choice as family pets. Originally bred to retrieve game, many Golden Retrievers are still seen in the field because they're so highly valued for their working skills. However, it's in the home and workplace that the Golden Retriever really shines. They are marvellous with children and other pets, and they are renowned for being one of the best breeds used for guide dogs. They excel at other jobs that they are asked to do, which includes detecting bombs, tracking, and competing in obedience classes. And they are one of the top choices of dogs used in search and rescue situations. They boast loyal and affectionate natures, whether they are working dogs or family pets, thanks to their loyal and trustworthy personalities. To describe a Golden Retriever in a nutshell, it's that these dogs are confident by nature as well as being extremely kind and affectionate, which is why they've become one of the top choices of family pet the world over, having been right at the top of the list when it comes to popularity. They are not known to be the best watchdog simply because they're so kind and rarely would a Golden Retriever show any sort of aggression towards other people or other animals. Known to be highly intelligent, Golden Retrievers are easy to train and they love working and being given jobs to do, whether in a home environment or working dogs out in the field. However, they are more relaxed than breeds like Border Collies and will quite happily chill out as well. And their kind natures and even temperaments shine through no matter where they are or what they are being trained or asked to do. Some interesting facts about these breeds is that there is a story that Golden Retrievers were originally used as performing dogs in the Russian circus, although there is actually no hard evidence of this. Golden Retrievers adore swimming and like nothing more than to take the plunge whenever they can, and they are one of the best therapy dogs in the world. Golden Retrievers have a tremendous sense of smell and are known to be brilliant tracking dogs, and they are one of the most smartest dogs on the planet. And they have a double coat which is extremely water repellent, which helps them with their superb swimming skills. Some of the positives about this breed are that Golden Retrievers are one of the most reliable and trustworthy breeds around. Extremely adaptable and they'll fit in with many different people's lifestyles and they remain very puppy-like well into their golden years. They are always eager to please and biddable making them perfect first dogs for novice owners and they're highly trainable thanks to their intelligence and that keenness to please. They're very social by nature and get on with everyone including other dogs, animals, pets and people. However, there is always negatives to be involved in any breed, and some of the negatives about the Golden Retriever are that they can be a little bit mouthy, which is a trait that does need to be gently curbed when Golden Retrievers are still young. They are high maintenance on the grooming front and are known to have that doggy smell about them. They do need a lot of exercise and mental stimulation, and when they're young, they can be quite easily distracted by things that go on around them. Golden Retrievers shed a lot of hair all year round and even more so in the spring and autumn and they are known to also suffer from few hereditary health issues which means pet vet bills can be high. At number 5 we have the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Staffordshire Bull Terriers have consistently been one of the most popular choices of terrier and for good reason. They are renowned for the kind natures when they are around people in a family environment even though they are originally bred to be fighting dogs. Staffies have also become one of the most popular dogs in the show ring and luckily this has not affected their traditional strong, rugged, muscular and much loved looks. As a tribute to their ancestry, Staffies are shown wearing broad leather collars with brass emblems on them which depict the Staffordshire knot. Staffies are fun to have around and although bo boisterous by nature, through correct breeding, handling and training these small to medium sized dogs develop into lovely characters that boast big personalities. Staff is like nothing more than a warm lap to curl up on and an owner they can look up to for all the direction and guidance they need with loyalty and devotion. Despite the breed's early origin, Staffordshire Bull Terriers are renowned for being lovely and loyal family pets as well as trustworthy companions. Staffies are known for their bold and courageous natures, but the breed is also renowned for being totally reliable and intelligent, although they can be headstrong and stubborn if not careful. However, Staffies do need to be handled and trained, but when given the right sort of direction, and because they are such smart dogs, they are quick to learn new things. The reputation for being aggressive by nature is totally unfounded, and they should not be thought of as being a dangerous breed whatsoever. The bad press the breed has been given over race recent years is not merited or well-founded, because Staffordshire Bull Terriers, when well-trained and cared for, make wonderful, well-behaved and affectionate family pets that boast endless amounts of energy and enthusiasm for life. And they're a real pleasure to have around and share a home with. Coming in at number four, we have the Labrador Retriever. 
Labrador Retrievers have consistently been one of the most popular family pets both here in the UK and elsewhere in the world for decades thanks to trustworthy and proven natures. Labs are gentle yet outgoing and always eager to please, which in short makes them highly trainable. Being so intelligent, the Labrador Retriever thrives just as well as in a home environment as they do working alongside their owners in the field. Originally bred to retrieve nets for fishermen and then game and fowl for hunters, the Labrador Retriever excels when asked to work in difficult and challenging terrains. They are more especially suited to work in and around water thanks to their alertness and excellent water-resistant coats. Labradors are famous for their easygoing yet playful and intelligent natures, typically displaying a temperament that is equally at home in the field, in the show ring, or in a home environment, or even as an assistance dog. Rarely displaying aggression, this ease of nature makes them unsurpassable, not only as pets, but also as assistants and working breeds. Labrador retrievers need quite a bit of care and attention, but they are one of the best choices for first-time dog owners because of their affectionate, loving, and loyal natures. Labrador Retrievers are generally very good around strangers and people they don't know, which is all part of their friendly and approachable natures. Some interesting facts about the breed include that there is some thought that Labrador Retrievers might have been called St. John's Dogs, or that they might have been called Lesser Newfoundlands. Other people think that the breed was named after the Portuguese word Lavradores, or the Spanish word Labradores, which when translated means rural agricultural workers. There is a village in Portugal called Castro Labarero where herding dogs are very similar looking to the Labrador Retrievers are there too. Liver and Golden Labs were known to exist way back in 1807 when they were referred to as chocolate or butterscotch yellow coloured dogs. The first yellow Labrador have been recognised was a dog named Ben of Hyde. Chocolate Labs became very popular in the 1930s and Gold and Red Fox Labs were bred to re-establish the colours by breeders in England using Balerian King Frost and his grandson Juan Fowl Tabasco, a dog responsible for being the biggest influence in re-establishing the colour Red Fox in the breed. All chocolate Labradors can trace their origins to eight different bloodlines. Some positives about the breed are that they are extremely reliable, trustworthy, and the breed is very well proven. Labs make wonderful family pets and have a real affinity with children. Being good natures and dependable, they're great around other dogs and animals because labs are so social by nature. They're always eager to please, which makes labs relatively easy to train. And when I say relatively easy to train, having owned a Labrador myself, I'll actually go more along the lines of saying extremely easy to train. One of the most easiest trained dogs I've ever worked with or owned or known. They're low maintenance on the grooming front and labs form strong bonds with their families but can be taught to be left on their own. However, the negatives can include that labs need a ton of mental stimulation and daily exercise. Even though they're low on the maintenance front, they do shed their fur copiously throughout the years, with yellow labs shedding more than black ones. Labs can be overly enthusiastic and bouncy, especially when young, and they tend to be a little mouthy, which needs to be gently curbed. Puppies can be naughty and boisterous, but they do grow out of this, usually around two years of age. Coming in on our bronze spot at number three, we have the Pug. The Pug remains one of the most popular breeds to own, not only here in the UK, but elsewhere in the world, and for good reason. Pugs may be small in stature, but they have big personalities and are extremely intelligent little dogs. They are confident by nature with an affectionate and mischievous side to their natures that endears them to just about everyone they meet. They adapt well to family life and other lifestyles, which are just some of the reasons they remain just as popular today as they were centuries ago. Pugs are incredibly people oriented and hate it when left on their own for any length of time. But once you've shared a home with a pug, there'll be absolutely no going back. Pugs are renowned for their kind, sweet natures, which is why they've remained such popular companions throughout the centuries. Some people say that sharing a home with a pug is more like living with a small child than a dog, which is especially true when it comes to their need for attention. Pugs are ultra sociable and they thrive on being around people. They do not do well when left on their own for longer periods of time. If they are left to their own devices for hours on end, pugs can become a little destructive around the home through sheer boredom and because they develop such serious separation anxiety. Some interesting facts about the pug include that pugs are one of the most ancient breeds in the entire world. In times past, pugs were treated like royalty in their native China, and pugs are a brassiophallic breed, which means that they do struggle with their breathing and something that is to be taken into consideration, especially during the summer months. Prince William of Orange was saved by his pug in the 16th century when his dog barked, alerting him that Spanish troops were about to ambush his camp, and became the official breed of the House of Orange. Napoleon's wife, Josephine, owned a pug called Fortune. Queen Victoria was a huge fan of the breed, and it was through her efforts that the practice of cropping a pug's ears was banned. Groups of pugs are referred to as grumbles, and pugs should have two curls in their tails. 
Pugs are susceptible to catching colds because of their short noses. The positives of this breed include that they're small and sturdy and highly adaptable dogs living just as happily in an apartment as they are in a big house. And being highly adaptable, this makes them perfect for first-time owners. They're also easy maintenance on the grooming front and they're incredibly social and affectionate by nature. They're very playful and clownish, which makes them hilarious to be with and they do not need a lot of daily exercise and they're also extremely loyal. However, some of the negatives of this breed can include that puppies play hard and can be whirling dervishes around the home. They are high maintenance on pretty much all fronts and pugs need lots of mental stimulation to be truly well-rounded dogs. They suffer from quite serious separation anxiety if left on their own for too long and pugs snort very loudly. They are also no known to suffer from a lot of flatulence, being the nice way to put it. And pugs are quite heavy shedders, more especially in the spring and autumn. They are prone to suffering from quite a few health issues because of their brachiophallic flat faces. Taking our silver medal in the number two spot is the French Bulldog. Related to both the American Bulldog and English Bulldog, the French Bulldog is smaller in size and is an exceptionally playful and good-natured character that easily adapts to different lifestyles and home environments, making one of the most popular companion dogs not only in the UK but elsewhere in the world too. Frenchies crave lots of attention and like nothing more than to spend time with their owners. One of the most endearing traits is their willingness to please and although they can be stubborn, when carefully handled, Frenchies can be taught to do some amazing things. French Bulldogs are known to be the clowns of the dog world but they are quite intelligent with a mischievous and playful streak in them. They may become a little possessive and protective of owners which will occasionally need a gentle reminder about who the alpha is in the household. They are generally very good around children, although it is always best to supervise any encounter kids have with any kind of dog. And French Bulldogs are known to be the perfect companion dogs, much preferring to be around people than being left on their own. Some interesting facts about the French Bulldog is that they're actually thought to originally come from ancient Greece. Great care must be taken when French Bulldogs travel on planes because they are a brassiophallic breed and therefore more at risk if they travel in cargo holds. French Bulldogs are not built to be good swimmers and care should always be taken when they are around water. They're very sensitive dogs by nature and hate being shouted at. They can have two shapes to their ears, being rose-shaped or bat-shaped, with dogs in the UK mainly being bred to have rose-shaped ears. Lace makers in the UK were big fans of the breed and used Frenchies as lap warmers while working. A nine-year-old Frenchie called Bugsy adopted a baby orangutan called Malone in Twycross Zoo and looked after the baby until he was old enough to join the mature orangutans. French Bulldogs are not barkers, but they are a talkative breed by nature and will hold long conversations with the people they love. French Bulldogs are a firm favourite with many celebrities the world over, which includes Hugh Jackman, who owns a dog called Darley. The positives of the Frenches include that they are great with children, but must always be supervised. They are highly adaptable, happy living in an apartment or a house. They are intelligent, easy to train, but mischievous. They are a good choice for first-time dog owners because Frenchies are easy to train and house train, with the added bonus being on that they thrive in a family environment. They only need shorter walks several times a day rather than fewer longer ones, and low shedding, although like other breeds, they drop more hair in the spring and autumn. They're wonderful companions because they're so amenable and eager to please without being overly demanding. However, the negatives do include that they're very expensive to buy a well-bred pedigree puppy from established reputable breeders. They can be stubborn and demanding at times, prone to developing that small dog syndrome if they are too pampered, and they can be only overly possessive of owners and families. They need to be groomed every week, paying a special attention to folds and tails, and these folds and flaps need to be checked and cleaned regularly, either on a daily or weekly basis. They can be smelly at times if their coats are not correctly cared for, and they're prone to quite a few hereditary and congenital health issues. They do not tolerate being left on their own for any length of time and do often suffer from separation anxiety. And French Bulldogs overheat very quickly in warm weather because of their flatter faces. And taking the gold medal in our number one spot is the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel is among one of the oldest toy breeds, boasting an illustrious history that can be traced back several centuries. The Kennel Club only recognised the Cavalier as a unique breed in the 1944, and by the 70s they had to become one of the most popular dogs in the UK. Cavaliers are larger than their King Charles cousins and they boast a longer, less snubbed nose too. Cavaliers are known to be easygoing dogs that easily adapt to many lifestyles, whether it's living in a country environment or an apartment in town. They are also known to be very good around children of all ages and become valued members of a family. They are also incredibly loyal and devoted companions and never too demanding. 
In general, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel is unlikely to show any aggression towards people or other animals because of the ultra-kind and laid-back natures, which is why they have consistently remained one of the most popular breeds, not only here in the UK, but elsewhere in the world as well. Cavalier King Charles Spaniels have very sweet natures. They are undemanding little dogs that adapt well to all lifestyles with little fuss at all. They are extremely loyal and affectionate by nature, as well as being playful, which is just some of the reasons why the breed has been so popular, not only here in the UK, but all around the world for such a long time. Other reasons include the fact that Cavaliers are so gentle by nature, and would never show any sort of aggression towards people or any other animals that they may meet. They are intelligent dogs without the keen prey drive of other Spaniels. Although they are slightly harder to train than these other Spaniels, some Cavaliers still manage to excel in canine activities, which includes agility. They are among one of the favourite breeds at shows, always finding a place on the rostrum. Some interesting facts about the breed include that many royals, including Queen Victoria, was a huge fan of the breed. They are considered as being the perfect lap dog and were once thought of as comforters. They were named after King Charles II, and many film stars and celebrities own Cavalier Charles, King Charles Spaniels, included Lauren Bacall. The positives of the breed are that they are trustworthy, reliable, and super affectionate with people and children of all ages. They are intelligent and easy to train and quick to learn. They are very adaptable, and calves are just as happy living in an apartment as they are in a house, providing they are given lots of exercise and mental stimulation. They are an excellent choice for first-time owners, and they are not known to be barkers. Very social by nature, which means they tend to get on with everyone they meet, which includes other animals and pets they have grown up with, as well as others that they meet for the first time. Cavaliers make wonderful companions for older people because they are loyal, loving, yet never overly demanding. However, some of the negatives can include that they are terrible watchdogs because they love everybody, they suffer from separation anxiety because they are so people-oriented, and they can be quite high maintenance on the grooming front and are prone to suffer from ear infections because of their long pendulous ears. Click top left to see my whole knockout 16 breed tournament to determine the ultimate guard dog breed or bottom left for another one of our videos. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and I'll see you on the next episode of the Canine Show.